there's so much information out there about food, nutrition, that I know from experience as a young racer, I didn't know what to believe and went off down the wrong path a few times. So I thought, what better person to bring in to have a chat with us today? He knows more about nutrition and training than anyone I've ever met by far. He also comes from a motorcycling background and he made it all the way to the top of the world in his sport together with his wife. She also achieved top of the world in hers um, using and gathering this info on the way. And uh, I'd like you to welcome Mr. 1995, Mr. Universe, Shane Stratton. Cheers, Simon. Thanks for that. Thanks for coming in today, buddy. And uh, I was wondering if you could run through a bit of an idea to give our viewers an idea on nutrition, what the do's and don'ts or the good and good and bads. Yeah, they, um, there's, like you said earlier, there is a lot of information out there. A lot of it is not totally correct. Um, with the years of eating like I did, uh, I didn't necessarily read everything or listen. I used what I seen results from my body. So what certain foods would do to me, that's what I'd eat. So if it gave me good results, I'd stick with that. And over the years, like it's 15, 20 years of doing it, um, you start to see the difference in what certain foods make. The um, Overall that time, sort of we've come down to the thing. Realistically, if you can't kill it, pick it or grow it, don't eat it. It's pretty simple really. The more natural foods you can eat, the better they are. You stay away from the processed foods. Um, we can go into that a little bit later, whether, but realistically we want to eat good quality whole foods. Gotcha. They work really well. So, um, for example, as a young racer, I got told to eat pasta, you know, and I, I uh, so wanted and craved like a, a big steak or a, a, even a burger, you know, and I'd always put it off till Sunday after the race. Um, can you explain pasta and is it okay to have a steak or... The funny thing about pasta, it's a very popular dish. A lot of people eat it. And you see with a lot of the athletes, most meals are pasta-based. Uh, it's probably one of the worst carbohydrates for that. Um, it's very refined and it's made from wheat, where a majority of the population do have a wheat intolerance, which they don't necessarily know about. Uh, the wheat intolerance, bloating, holding fluid, holding extra weight, that's something you want to get away from. So it also can make you lethargic. So if we're going to eat a carbohydrate, we want to eat something that's more natural and slower burning and not as refined. That's where potatoes, oatmeal, um, even rice to a point is not too bad, but the um, potatoes are the best and uh, oatmeal in the mornings because it's a very low glycemic index carbohydrate, which gives you constant energy over a long period of time. As far as the steak goes, not a problem. The, the steak is a little bit denser than, than the other proteins like the fish, the chicken, uh, tuna, things like that. But as far as protein goes, 100 grams of steak, chicken, fish has normally got around 27 grams of protein in it. So it doesn't matter what the protein source is, you're still getting the same nutritional value. Uh, um, eating, sitting down and having a monster steak, yes, it'll take longer to digest, but having a small steak on race day or for lunch is not a problem. Gotcha. Um, another um, important thing you said about is uh, fluids, you know, like um, retaining fluids, some help yeah. you, I imagine races, that's the last thing they need, you know? Yeah, the, la the, the best thing, the best way to get keep your body uh, flushed with fluid is drink water. The more water your body has coming in, the less water will actually hold. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but the, and that means just water nothing else. You were saying um, we often we'll drink uh, replacement drinks or and that doesn't count as water you're saying? No, it may be a little bit of lemon juice in it for a bit of flavour but water works the best for flushing out your, your kidneys and when you flush your kidneys it flushes out all the um, excess and it stops your body from holding water. If you got, there's a lot of people out there you see them drinking soft drinks and and then they don't want, because they're a racer they don't want the weight so they drink diet sodas. They're the worst thing in the world. You don't want it, especially on race day, you don't want to have any carbonated drinks at all. Because carbonated drinks tend to make your um, uh, body pump up. And of course, the sugar in the drinks is, is not good. And the diet sodas are even worse. Because of all the chemicals, it makes your body retain fluid. I've done it before, I've seen 
getting ready for competitions and things like that, guys that were dieting were drinking diet soda. And of course, when you're dieting and you, some diet soda tastes really good, within a couple of those, I'd put on three kilo in two days. Yeah. And all it was was water. I stopped drinking the diet soda, it ran straight back out again. Cool. I've never touched them since. So just reading between the lines here, from everything you've said, it sounds like eating uh, fruit, vegetables, uh, gr- grain, like you said, oatmeal, uh, fish, uh, meat, eggs, just keep it simple like that. Stay very, away from bread. Yeah, very simple. Pasta. It's like you, um, the mornings you need, a, you need a good quality protein, eggs are perfect. So, um, and you want some energy throughout the day, so you want a nice, good quality uh, carbohydrate, which would be oatmeal. So also what you want them to do, you want to have smaller meals more often. The, the smaller meals we have more often, the faster our metabolism goes. Your body works sort of like a, a locomotive, like a steam train. The more coal you feed it, the faster it gets, the more coal it burns, the faster it goes. Well, the smaller meals, by having, instead of having one or two main meals, your body's metabolism goes really slow. So have, break that into five to six smaller meals throughout the day, every two to three hours, and your body's got to metabolize that food every couple of hours. So your body speeds up. So when you eat, you can feel your body core temperature coming up. That means your metabolism kicking in and you're literally burning body fat just eating. So you're saying by eating, say overall is the same volume of food, but break it down into more often meals so you get a constant. Yeah. You'll and you'll actually it, be lighter than you would. Exactly. And you- also, when your body starts, your metabolism starts getting faster, you can increase the quantity of those foods. So you can actually have bigger meals more often and, and still lose weight. weight. Well, fantastic. So it, like I said, there's, it's, the meals are quite basic, but with a bit of, um, bit of playing around with experimenting that, you can get still taste very good, but you want to have basic meals all with a good quality protein, up until lunchtime, mid-afternoon, depending on what training you're doing, a low glycemic carbohydrate, and after that, just fibrous carbs, the vegetables and salads, things like that, of an evening. I've got a couple of questions, um, because I know, like Shane came from Motorcycle World before, so can adapt, you know. You rode bikes, race bikes before. You yeah, training. motocross and supercross till obviously it blew the knees out, and then uh, uh, 250 GP in the Australian Championships. Um, rode that for a few years until the, uh, as all young racers do, run out of money and you never got the ride so I had to do something else. So uh, I th- wasn't a very good swimmer so triathletes were out of the question so I just started weight training and I think I took it a little bit too far. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So what my question was to adapt you know, the, what your knowledge to motorcycle racing, um, for ex- the question I had is on for example, I would do my morning session, uh, whether it was qualifying or you know, uh, free practice. Um, I'd have lunch and feel not long after lunch a big sleepy, you know, and I thought, oh, I've got to have a little um, power nap. I got onto this power nap thing just to feel like restart and clear my head. I still like it now, but I understand from what you're saying, it's also to do with what I'm eating is why I get the sleepies after Yeah, lunch, just because you know? you've, um, normally like you said before, a lot of the times it's at the race stage you ate pasta. Now pasta has got a quite high glycemic index, which means the glycemic index basically, it's the rate at which your, the carbohydrate releases, releases sugar into the body understand. or releases energy. So the higher the glycemic index, the faster it's burned. You get yeah. sugar, which is 100. Right, okay. so sugar will give you the biggest kick and yeah. then run then, out. Then what happens, when you get a very high glycemic or fast burning carbohydrate, your body has to excrete, your pancreas has to excrete insulin to get rid of all the blood sugar. What happens when, you, when it's built up so high, it excretes a lot of insulin, your blood sugar crashes, you get sleepy. Okay, what, so when you're looking throughout the day, your blood sugar level is going like this. And our aim is to smooth and it out. And our aim is to keep it as level as possible. Then your energy levels are constant, your brain function is constant, you're not high or low. Okay. So you keep, keep a lot smoother base. So your performance won't change, which is very important, especially with what you do. Is, and racing road bikes, there isn't very much room for error. <laughs> exactly. So just as a little idea, what would you, instead of having the pasta as a racer for lunch, what would you do? What would you have? Um, morning, morning wise would be first thing in the morning, again, oatmeal, mm-hmm. very good, um, and some eggs. Yep. 
uh, throw a bit of ham or bacon or something in there to make a little omelette or something with some, some bit of veggies, tomatoes, yeah. so it's nice and light. Um, snack uh, mid-morning could be some fruit, but again, watch what fruit you eat because not all fruits are actually good because of the amount of fruit crust they got in them. Generally, the fruit, best fruits out there, um, grapefruit, pineapple and strawberries. Okay. Most of them are really, they're calorie deficient. That means there's more, takes more calories to digest them than what's in them. Okay. Bananas is, is very good for potassium to stop cramps and things like that, but they're basically pure sugar. They'll make you fatter than carbohydrates. Okay. It's not a, if you, you could eat, you take out the calories from a banana and add it with rice, you'll actually lose weight with the rice. The bananas will make you fatter. So it's, there's a lot of little things with fruit because they're, again, they're easy digestible. There's a lot of sugar content in them. They're not the best, but they are good for potassium, which stops the cramps. So it's a bit of a payoff for which one day. So it's the omelette ham for bricky with some oatmeal, whatever, yeah. you know? And then uh, some fruit for a little snack, a bit of pineapple, a little bit of melon or something. Lunchtime. Mid, mid, and lunchtime, you'd have some potatoes, a little bit of chicken or salmon, tuna, potatoes, and a little bit of salad. Okay, awesome, perfect. Afternoon, yeah. you could do basically the same again, um, and then you that, mean the, to do repeat the lunch? You repeat yeah. the lunch again. Okay, yeah. So smaller amounts. Small amounts twice. every about every three hours. Yeah. It keeps the constant coming in. Okay. And there's not too much to digest, and yeah. you don't have the highs and lows. Awesome. And a rough idea on an evening meal. Like evening meal again, nice quality protein. Um, there's nothing wrong with steak, and if you're like me, you like a good steak. So, yeah. uh, but just don't go silly. If it's race weekend, don't sit down and have a 400 gram steak. Yeah, you know what I mean? Have a 150, 200 gram steak, um, and yeah. stick it to fibrous vegetables: the broccolis, cauliflowers, the the yeah. green vegetables. Um, if you want a couple, a little bit of sweet potato, or potato, okay, but only a little bit. Stay away from the rices and things like that in the evening, because we're going to sleep. We don't need the extra energy. The cool thing about the information Shane's giving us on nutrition is it doesn't matter if you're a professional racer, an office worker, a track dayer, we all run on the same fuel and this will help all of us. Isn't that right, Shane? Yeah, generally, the, the better we can get our nutrition, the better our body will work. You know what I mean? The, the body works very well. It's, a, it's an awesome tool. Um, and by getting the right diet and feeding it the right fuel, your body generally runs a lot better. So you feel better, you, you'll look better, you get more self-confidence, um, and you can uh, perform better. So overall, it's, um, by spending a bit more time working on your food, uh, it's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. Shane has helped over 20 sports people achieve world championships with diet and training help. He's been kind enough to put a list together that'll be on our website below this video on what should we be eating. Is that correct, Sean? Yeah, well, basically what we do, we put a list of the, uh, the good proteins, uh, the good carbohydrates, also the low glycemic index carbohydrates, the slower burning ones, um, the good fruits, the better fruits to be eating, and what, what to be drinking, the amount of fluids you should be intaking during the day. If you're interested, in a professionally put together diet and training program for you, made by Shane, you'll find more information on our website.